Did you, like most people, have some fitness goals on your list of New Year's resolutions this year? Well, back in the day when I used to live in Brooklyn, I was a nutritionist, and the thing people would ask me for help with most often was weight loss. But inevitably, they'd be reluctant to make the long-term consistent changes to their diet. And you know what? That's okay. We all start somewhere, and weight loss doesn't actually have to start with diet at all. In fact, a lot of times, it's a hormonal issue of leptin and ghrelin balance, and a lot of times, hormonal imbalances are directly traceable to dehydration. So rather than starting with changing your diet, because statistically people are more likely to change religion than to change their diet, let's start with hydration instead. Being hydrated helps to boost your metabolism, cleanse your body of waste, and act as a natural appetite suppressant. In fact, you can actually increase your metabolic rate by 30% just by drinking about 17 ounces of water. It's called water-induced thermogenesis. In fact, being even 1% dehydrated can cause a significant drop in your metabolism, and most people are far more dehydrated than just 1%. In other words, just being more hydrated alone will help you to burn more calories even while you're resting. Also, drinking more water helps your body to stop retaining excess water, leading you to drop any extra pounds of water weight that you might be carrying around. Plus, if you're trying to achieve lipolysis, which is fat burning, the first step of that process is hydrolysis, which occurs when water molecules interact with triglycerides or fats to create glycerol and fatty acid. So hydration is key in the process of lipolysis or fat burning. Now, at least four different studies have looked at how drinking water just before a meal actually changes how much you actually eat during that meal. So in one example, researchers found that people who drank a pint of water before their meal consumed 30% less calories than those who didn't hydrate first. And those who drank water also reported feeling more satisfied and having a lower appetite after that meal and throughout the day, even though they had eaten less than those who didn't drink water. Another study put 50 people on a diet for 12 weeks. Half of them drank a pint of water before each meal, and the control group didn't. They found that the people who drank water before their meals lost almost 50% more weight than those who didn't. That's a lot. Now, of course, the people in both groups were on a calorie-restricted diet, which I don't recommend, but the effects of hydration here are really clear. And in case you think that it's just an effect of feeling more full because your belly is filled with water before the meal, the same study showed that at the end of the 12 weeks, if those who had been drinking more water stopped doing so before their meals, they still maintained the lower volume of food, showing that the main effect is not from stomach volume, but from hydration. Not to mention, we all do this, we often mistake thirst for hunger, because the brain uses the same pathways through the hypothalamus for both thirst and hunger. So we might be totally parched and our body is crying out for water, but we misinterpret that cue and think that we want a sandwich. Because if you've been ignoring your thirst signal long enough, it becomes harder to detect, and the body will try to get its hydration needs met by absorbing water from food. But our ancestral diets that our, our body is calling out for when we get hungry, they were far more hydrating than that very dehydrating modern Western diet that most people eat nowadays. So it's a really common phenomenon. When we get thirsty, we tend to overeat. Getting back in touch with our body's thirst cues is so important for overall health, especially weight management. One University of Washington experiment found that a single glass of water shut down midnight hunger pangs for nearly 100% of people in the study. They weren't hungry, they were thirsty. So why do our bodies store excess fat in the first place? Now we've all heard that it's the body's way of storing excess energy that hasn't been burned off yet, or the body's way of preparing for when food might not be available by storing extra calories, and that's partially true. But when fat is metabolized, it produces water. And in nature, this is often used by animals to combat conditions of drought and dehydration. Desert animals often do this. They store fat so that they can stay hydrated by burning that fat when water isn't abundantly available. Well, as Dr. Zach Bush has said, we are all living in a desert without even realizing it because nearly 100% of the population is chronically dehydrated as our lifestyles, the environments that we're in, are constantly drying us out. So the body, thinking that there's a drought, may retain fat stores so that it can have a source of internal hydration, a source of metabolic water, when it burns that fat through lipolysis. Now, it's been known for a really long time that obesity is associated with dehydration. People who are obese tend to show dehydration in serum osmolality tests, which is the amount of salt in your blood. And it's higher in bigger people, not because salt is a bad thing and they're consuming too much of it, but rather because their blood is, is less diluted because they're dehydrated. As Professor Richard Johnson said, dehydration is a stimulus for excess fat production. Now, we all know that eating too much sugar causes fat storage, right? 
But as it turns out, that may only be true in a dehydrated body. They've done studies where they gave too much sugar to animals, but if they also increased the animal's hydration, they could slow or even fully block the development of excess fat storage as a result of all of that extra sugar. Not only did they block the excess fat storage, they blocked insulin resistance, fatty liver, and obesity just by increasing these animals' level of hydration at the same time they increase the sugar. So these studies show that hydration is the antidote to metabolic syndrome. Again, quoting Professor Johnson, obesity really represents a dehydrated state. To manage obesity, we should not just be thinking about calorie intake and exercise, but rather about increasing our water intake and staying in a hydrated state. And I would add to that, that it's not just about increasing your water intake, it's making sure you have intracellular hydration, that's the key. Now, Dr. batman in his groundbreaking book about obesity, cancer, and depression as direct effects of dehydration, he stated, there is an adverse relationship between water consumption and fat storage in the body. Now, you can find that book in the bookstore section of waterslife.shop if you want the full biological breakdown of why that's true, including how dehydration is the cause of high LDL cholesterol and high triglycerides and all of that sort of thing. But just to be clear, this is through drinking an optimal amount of high quality water. Going all water crazy and doing a keg stand on your water carboy just to try to set your metabolism on fire will backfire, I promise you. You need an intentional and sustainable approach. And actually, the more high quality your drinking water is, the less you actually need to drink. Plus, if you're eating a hydrating diet and you've cut out dehydrating lifestyle practices, again, the less you need to drink. So this isn't about guzzling gallons. It's about honoring your body of water by becoming conscious of the fact that wellness comes from the well of water within you. The bottom line is, Water is a necessary part of the chemical equation of weight loss. Your body literally cannot metabolize stored fat if you don't have an excess of water in your body for it to use in the process of lipolysis and detoxification. Most people are chronically dehydrated without even realizing it. So as a society, most people don't even have enough liquid life on board just for baseline health and maintenance much less an excess that can help us to truly heal and thrive and detoxify. So maybe rather than yet again for another year, putting weight loss at the top of your list of New Year's resolutions, make your intention to love your body. And it's a body of water. So its primary love language is hydration. Give your body of water what it needs to thrive. Share this video and read the comments to find out exactly how to kickstart your hydration.